Um, so yeah, my name is Thomas Espinos. Uh, I'm originally from France, a very small village uh, named Marges, uh, right around the corner of Lyon. Uh, so I guess, yeah, when I was younger, I, I moved around, uh, mainly because of my dad's job. So uh, I traveled around France, uh, around Italy, and ended up uh, doing most of my high school in New York, where we met. Uh, so in New York, I was in a French high school, pretty regular high school, uh, living the New York life. And uh, my dad works in the fashion industry. So I guess I always, he doesn't design or anything, but I guess I had that connection uh, with the design world, uh, mainly through my dad and my mother, who also designed uh, websites for a living. So I guess that's uh, kind of my background based uh, on, my, on my family relations. Uh, when I was in New York, uh, I really enjoyed to draw. I guess that was uh, kind of the main, uh, the very first connection I guess I had with architecture and uh, two forms of drawing, one which was more visual and more related to the city itself. Uh, so a lot of sketching and that sort of stuff. Another one which was a little more uh, funky and unusual and uh, mainly driven by, uh, I was really into like comics, French comics, uh, American comics, not so, not as much, uh, also Japanese comics. So that was also kind of like what drove me to uh, drawing on the regular basis. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, when I was in high school, I was already interested in the arts, uh, also through music and other stuff like that. Um, and, but yeah, I guess I didn't really know about architecture. I didn't know anyone that uh, was an architect or uh, worked in that industry. So I had very little uh, background knowledge, I guess, about this whole um, uh, <coughs> job. And um, yeah, so I guess that's kind of like uh, how I first started learning about architecture. Uh, was very late in the game, basically in, in 11th grade, late 11th grade. So yeah, I kind of like started to get interested in the field, but uh, only because I thought of it as uh, kind of a safe way of uh, being able to like produce art uh, without necessarily, uh, you know, living the very dangerous life of uh, the artist which uh, seems perilous and uh, kind of uh, unregulated. Like it, you kind of have to like make your own way through it. So I, I guess I kind of needed a certain amount of structure uh, to produce. And so, yeah, I guess that's kind of when I got started to be interested in the field of architecture uh, and started to look into it. So which school did you apply to? Uh, I applied mainly in the US because uh, coming from Europe, well, my parents were very uh, into that mindset of the American universities. Uh, they kind of idolized the whole American uh, system of education, uh, which truthfully seems uh, now, you know, that I've been through five years of undergrad studies seems a little weird to me. But uh, yeah, in the US, I guess I applied to a lot of the most of the Ivy Leagues um, uh, and uh, a lot of in California, uh, Berkeley, um, USC, uh, I think, um, I don't know what were, Cornell, um, uh, Pratt, uh, some other in the US, I guess, uh, McGill in Canada and uh, a lot in the UK also, uh, Bath, um, RCA maybe, uh, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, that, that type of university, I guess. And none, none, one in France. So um, what's, what are the top five that you go into? Uh, I guess the top that I got into or yeah. that I wanted to get into. Your top five preferences that you got into? That I got into. Uh, probably Berkeley, Pratt, USC. Uh, what else? 
Uh, I guess those were the top three. Uh, yeah, I don't rec recollect the others. <laughs> um, so, what was the oh, and Cyark, Cyark, obviously. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Yeah. So what was the process uh, that we followed as far as applying and getting getting in? You know, we were we worked together. You were one of our students, one of the, the better students. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> we were. So, so, um, so, what did you think about the process? Can you describe um, how um, you know what role you played in your application and uh, yeah, yeah. about it? Well, it was interesting because. Uh, I guess it was a bit of a slap in the face. I don't know if it was because, again, I was not late in the game, but you know, I, all these, all this process kind of uh, emerge uh, at the very last second. But uh, it was it was a lot of hard work, not but that I enjoyed a lot. Uh, mostly because I guess when you're in high school, um, well, the level of work is uh one of a high school but when you're creating a portfolio uh for architecture it kind of like sets you in the mood of uh what it is that uh or like the working process that like i have today so obviously a lot of extra hours and so i guess most of the focus was on the portfolio on the creation of the portfolio itself uh which as i recall we had uh basically created five main uh large projects uh each one was a very specific specific theme and uh was um basically like trying to target an aspect of architecture uh through different uh uh themes but uh yeah and the idea was was also to like always uh basically like uh morph those ideas with what was written on paper so like all those all the interests all the essays that were produced for the different universities uh were always kind of like uh yeah like had a conversation with the visual uh imagery of like what was produced so I yeah Briefly, before we go back to talking about your experience at architecture school, um, I, I want to wanna ask briefly about your opinion on the strategic part, which is the, what's the first segment of our process, what we went through as far as building your, your strategy and segment of purpose and beginning with project development. If you remember, I don't know if you remember the Piranesi projects and the- Yeah, totally. Everything. <laughs> Yeah, man, that stick with me for sure. So, um, if you can tell me, what was your, how do you think uh, the strategic development process helped you, and what was the effect on your application? Right. Uh, I guess those first projects uh, kind of like gave me of a, an idea of what architecture could be, and it was well, I guess the first, um, the first thing that I had seen where like basically you know architecture could be related to the art so every time that we started uh, a project it always started with like uh, I guess maybe like a technique that I was interested in or a subject that I was interested in an artist that I was interested in and everything kind of like grew from these interests which was very fulfilling I guess because uh architecture didn't wasn't just like this exterior object that you had to study it was it really became this uh this this tool to like basically uh grow yourself and your ideas and uh whatever it is that you want to produce so yeah that's kind of how i visualize it i guess what was the the role of uh, of the statement of purpose in that whole process remember what do you mean? The essay. Um, do you do you think it was a constructive tool? Do you think it was? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess the idea was to really like create a persona, a persona that you wanted to be. Uh, so in that sense, yeah, it, it's kind of funny because I guess it, it kind of like uh, puts some kind of 
it's really hard to like describe yourself and you know like encapsulate who yeah. you are so it was really helpful not only to like understand who you are but like to build that person uh to generate that ideal that you have in mind that person that you essentially want to like build further on uh in the future so yeah cool um going back to architecture school um let's talk a little bit about your current experience talk to me about your, about your life there at usc it must be amazing right it's, so, it's interesting yeah now what's a usc student's life day to day all right uh so it's not all sunshine, I guess, uh, even though I'm in LA. Um, so I, get, I had never been in Los Angeles before. Uh, it, was, it was a very new experience to me. It's weird. It's basically this landfill of concrete. That's how I like to reference it as. Uh, but yeah, USC is, uh, this, has this huge campus in the very middle uh, of uh, the city. And it's kind of like a very small city of its own. Um, <clears throat> so I guess it's, it's very easy to like be live in that bubble that is USC and not necessarily experiment LA as LA. Uh, so that, that was kind of my first year. Uh, I got pretty tired, uh, of that lifestyle pretty fast. Uh, and, uh, from that point on, I moved out, uh, of USC, but that first year I was like uh, living on campus. And after that, uh, I kind of branched off, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, USC is super comfortable. Uh, it has a ridiculous amount of, uh, of uh, utilities and uh, basically they have everything that you need to like produce whatever it is that you're looking to produce. Um, so as a student, uh, I'm definitely, uh, I have it good. You know, it's, it's definitely, definitely a, a good thing, uh, especially in the architectural world. I mean, I, a lot of the schools out there don't necessarily give uh, the students the tools that they need um, to produce their projects. And, uh, you know, like the facilities there are like amazing. So in that respect, uh, the school is really great. Um, the professors are, uh, very cool as well. They're very young. I was very surprised by how young, uh, the professors were at USC. A lot of them, uh, they're, it's very easy to like relate to them because, you know, they're kind of like, a lot of them are just coming out of graduate school, which is a little shocking truthfully, because you realize like, well, you know, this person is only a few years older than me, but I guess they have so much more knowledge than I do. And um, when you look at other schools like SciArc, who have you know like these huge uh, you know archy stars like being actual professors, there is a certain gap, I guess, uh, in that respect, which I always thought was good and bad because uh, you know sometimes it doesn't feel like necessarily super reassuring to have you know like a 26 year old tell you like what's up um but uh it's also it's also really great because uh they're obviously much it's much easier to like communicate with them and um so a lot of them are uh have their own professions a lot of the younger people surprisingly yeah have their own um office and you know have their own projects so they're very hands on and they understand how the industry works, uh, especially in this day and age, which, you know, like architects or like big uh, corporate um, people wouldn't necessarily uh, know, uh, especially for a person like me who, you know, does not want to work, work in the corporate world and uh, probably wants to stay in LA. I'm not sure. I mean, we can talk about this later, but um, yeah. And also what's great, I guess, about USC, uh if i were to compare i like to compare usc to sire just because it's so close um uh yeah i mean usc is a huge school so uh what's great about architecture is that you know like it opens door to like 
a multitude of other disciplines that you are able to explore in a school like USC. Mm -hmm. So for example, right now, uh, um, I'm very interested in animation 2D and 3D. And so like, you know, I've been able to take some classes, not that much, but enough to like get basically, you know, some kind of a head start uh, over people that don't take them and, uh, you know, like basically get a glimpse of what that world looks like. A school like SciArc, which is very much uh, um, uh, focused on solely architecture, very experimental, experimental architecture, which is great and also super open, but you know you don't necessarily have um, the possibility to explore all these other paths and options that you get at USC. So that's that's really cool. What is your aspiration as an architect? Um, what's your goal in life? And, right. Um, and is the university, you think that there, the curriculum is helping you kind of uh, work your way there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I guess I, I don't want to be an architect, which is you know, probably the worst answer you would want in this podcast. <laughs> uh, but but I recommend architectural studies to like anyone that what, is plan, who is plan, anyone who is planning to not be an architect. I recommend architectural studies, which you know, yeah, let's talk about that. But before sure. before we do, what do you want to what what do you want? Do you know what you want to be or not yet? Not not really. It's yeah, it's in uh it's I'm still thinking about it. Become an architect. I, yeah, that's that's the one decision I've made. Now let me understand that. Let's deconstruct that answer a little bit. Sure. So does that mean you don't want to become a licensed architect, or you don't want to yeah. you don't want to get your license, or do you want to not want to design buildings? What does that mean exactly? So it's a broad statement, and uh, obviously, uh, it uh, it doesn't mean I don't want to work in the architectural world. It just means that I don't want. You know, I, I'm not looking to get my architectural license at the moment, and I am looking uh, into different uh, paths right now that basically don't regiment themselves to uh, the classic architectural um, vision, you know, and like basically going directly into a firm or doing architectural graduate studies. Uh, as soon as I'm done with this last semester. Um, so the large picture I do not have, but I am uh, you know, more interested into going into the art world, that's for sure. Uh, but that obviously doesn't exclude architecture, that's totally like in that realm. Uh, but yeah, it's very open uh, and I'm still you know, looking for some uh, directions Right, so so your intent is to experiment a little bit and try different things and see where you fit. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Do you have any sense of where you would fit or what makes you happy? So right, yeah. Uh, so right now, I applied to one school only for graduate uh, studies, uh, and it's uh, well, it's RCA, but it's uh, experimental animation. Uh, yeah, so the idea is that that program is really interesting because it's basically uh, very open to whatever background that you originally have, so mine being architecture, uh, and they basically work with you to like uh, mix both worlds. Uh, not necessary, and you know that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be animation that will be used for architecture. I see it kind of as the reverse, you know, like my architectural design background uh, as a basis, basically, for animation. So that's kind of what I have in mind. I'm uh, still waiting for a response at the moment. Um, and this decision to go to the RCA uh, for uh, grad school, um, is that based on that one course that you took in animation? Not really. Uh, I was doing animation before that. That class was, you know, just uh, just an additional uh, way for me to like experiment more. 
I already had an idea of uh, what I wanted to do with animation. I guess it did help, you know, like it helped in the sense that it got me connections, more connections, I guess, with the animation world, uh, whether it be students or professors. Uh, and that definitely launched the conversation uh, in a more serious way, you know, where like, you, you know, I'd be showing my work and they'd be like, oh yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe you should think about this more seriously. Uh, and I guess, yeah, I guess that, that got me pumped a little. And I, from that point on, I, I guess I, I, I did, you know, like think of it more, less as a pastime and more as a professional, uh, objective. All right. So if you were to do that, which you will, how, uh, what kind of, um, technologies and what kind of skills do you feel that you'll be able to transfer to your new pursuit right. uh, from the school of architecture? Yeah. Uh, I mean, truthfully, I guess that's also one thing at USC. Um, if we're, if we're talking just like, you know, like pure skills when it terms, when it comes to like, uh, <coughs> you know, using, uh, different softwares and all of that, uh, they don't actually teach you any of that at USC. Like there are no classes except one, which is Revit, uh, at the very last semester of your fifth year. Um, but except for that, yeah, you're kind of on your own. So uh, in that sense, you know, over the years, I have learned a few softwares like uh, Maya and uh, all the Adobe suites, all of that, uh, that will definitely help me in the animation world. Uh, obviously for all these years, I've also been sketching and drawing a lot for the sake of architecture, which is uh, obviously super uh, useful for that. Um, and but I guess from the actual studying uh, of USC, I mean, uh, I took a lot of my projects uh, with a very like artistic lens. So a lot of my projects are very conceptually driven. So it, it was more, they taught me more how to think rather than uh, how to like, you know, make a building. And that's very valuable to me. That was definitely the most valuable uh, part of my studies within these five years is, you know, how to think individually and how to create uh, concepts that I really care for and that I think, you know, will be like driving, not necessarily solely my aesthetic, but the way I see life uh, in the future and uh, problem solving, obviously. So that's that's really what I'm taking with me, I guess, uh, if I were to go to RCA today. Yeah, can you elaborate on what you said about them helping you how to think? Can you describe that uh, in some way? Right. Um, so I guess, you know, every semester we're given uh, one project, one main uh, project. And um, a lot of the work that you produce there is obviously, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's work that you do by yourself. Uh, there aren't many like team projects, uh, which is, you know, uh, it's bad and good because you don't get to work too much with other people, but you also get to like really uh, persevere in, your own thoughts and the own uh, uh, way that you think. And so you basically uh, work with one professor full time, uh, three days a week, four hours a session. Um, and it's a lot of back and forth. And every like two, two weeks, basically, you have one main uh, presentation uh, that you do in front of your professor. Uh, your whole class and sometimes other architects uh, that they bring uh, as a jury. And so it's a constant conversation and it's, 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 uh, you basically like keep, uh, you just like think about this one project for three to four months constantly, like night and day. And I guess before, going to architecture school, I had never like 
focus so much energy on one problematic at a time, you know? So like being able to like, uh, you know, focus on uh, one objective for a long period of time, uh, being able to be like be given that opportunity, uh, hoping, you know, to like uh, solve problems that are not even necessarily like prescribed in uh, the problematic of uh, the project itself, you know, whether they be like social, cultural, um, is really expanding your mind about, you know, what's out there and uh, how to like tackle all these things that, you know, you didn't even necessarily knew uh, were part of, you know, the realm of design. So, yeah. No, I learned how to think. Can you be more specific? Right. Um, uh, I mean, I guess it's uh, the way. Hmm. I mean, they, they, uh, I don't know. All the like you're exposed to like such a multitude of personalities that like you know don't don't necessarily understand the way you think and your background uh, so being thrown in that like melting pot of like uh, um, because a lot I don't know, a lot of the people they bring are not necessarily just architects like you have filmmakers um you have people that you know work more intensely in the structural uh compartment of uh architecture you have uh people that focus more on um the social uh um like platform of uh architecture and i i guess it's like being able to like have uh, I don't know converse with like all these different individuals uh, just kind of gives you the opportunity to like see things differently. Um, yeah, I don't know. You should think about that question more often. Well, I mean, uh, it's a uh, it's an important question because first of all, I uh, it's probably that. The answer that you've given me is probably due to the fact that you haven't really thought about it in very concrete terms. But I'm sure, mm -hmm. having been through architectural education, I know that a lot of it is visceral. Um, it's certain things that you don't really understand. They come out as you experience the world and, and you do things. Yeah, I guess uh, there are also, yeah. You gotta go ahead. Yeah, I guess like two things that like, I think I've taken from these studies uh, and from the way these people approach uh, the different thematics and problem solving. Well, first of all, there is a very like humanistic uh, approach, which I wasn't necessarily uh, exposed to before. And uh, yes, a very altruistic like vision uh, of problem solving um so when when you are creating it's it's very much related to like well not you basically uh, um there's also a huge compromise of of your vision and yeah. that, i don't know if that's a good thing or or a bad thing for you what do you think yeah no i think it's it's definitely a good thing uh you know they they, they definitely like uh they really push you uh, and it can be very nerve wracking because, you know, you think, you know, you propose something, you think it looks good, you think uh, it works out and there is never a definite answer to anything that you're producing. And that's kind of what they let you know by always, you know, having a comment, you know, being positive or negative. Uh, you just kind of realize that you have very little control over uh, your environment. and this ability of being aware of that and, you know, being very like uh, grounded 
to this reality of you know just uh, knowing that you, you're just you you you're still learning, and even these professors they admit that they're still learning, uh, uh, and that there is no exact solution. I think that's also like a main part of uh, this education system, uh, and also like you know they kind of like throw you. Uh, uh, not under the bus, but they kind of like let you figure out things for yourself. You know, they they kind of they try to give you a direction, but again, it's just a conversation. So like, by they kind of just give you clues basically, and it's for you to like figure out uh, the the solutions themselves. So it's back uh, fire kind of. What's up? They throw you in the water and see if you can swim. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's how you learn. Yeah, and that's that's I mean that that has saved me, you know, and like it's like because of that I've been able to like explore all these other fields that I'm interested in that are not like restricted to architecture because yeah, they kind of gave me that recipe of uh um you know, not like being okay with like not knowing what it is I'm doing and just learning on the stack. It's interesting. I feel I always feel that the, the mind of the architect is very close to the mind of uh, the classic entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like you basically have to figure out everything for yourself and if you don't have the passion or if you don't have the vigor and uh you don't take the time to do that uh and learning for your, by yourself doesn't mean that you know like it's not just tutorials and looking things up online it's like you know creating uh social uh like creating social interaction is also part of that uh and you know like basically yeah it's you're, you're creating your own like virtual like company uh in your in your head and uh yeah. It's like creating a network of people that you trust that you can ask questions or uh, just exchange ideas. Right. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. So, um, as far as now, I know you, you've cho your chosen career now or direction is animation. Mm -hmm. um, is it, does it have anything to do, by the way, I forgot to ask that, with the fact that you're in LA and you want to be involved in the animation industry there or something like that? Or? A little bit. Uh, I mean, the animation industry in LA is any professional exposure to animation, like in any of the studios there? Or zero. Something? No, I have none whatsoever. This I is a very know. new idea. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is like super recent. I kind of decided that, like, you know, like four to five months ago. Does so... you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in the process of. Maybe he learned it through this video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll send it to him. Uh, we've only had so many conversations about the subject. Uh, how should I put this? He's not against it. He obviously uh, reminds me that it's a risk that I should be aware of, and but he is supportive. Um, again, I didn't like completely break it down to him but also like you know like i guess i i made it f feel like i'm completely you know like secluding the architectural world but like one of my first jobs will probably be in an architectural office uh because this is my skill set yeah. and this is what i do and uh, like for example uh yeah i was thinking of like uh going to work for uh you know like maybe rendering like companies which is obviously related to architecture uh but is more on the uh you know uh aesthetic uh side of presentation rather than uh building um so you know that's kind of, that's kind of like a, a step towards my uh, other objective uh so yeah, I mean, you know, the way I explained it to him was not that I'm not following an architectural career, but uh, this is what I'm interested in, and I'm gonna pursue it, 
and it's gonna be some you know like a mix mash of everything that I've acquired so far. So, uh, yeah, so is yeah. that, it's, it's it's a detour perhaps, and yeah, you know, may lead to something. Yeah, and if it doesn't work out, you know, like it's not. I don't see, uh, especially in these times where you know it's obviously like the worst moment to find a job, it, like especially in the architectural industry. Um, like I don't really see this as a problem. Fine a couple of months ago, uh, but now, yeah, now because of coronavirus, is right? Yeah, 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 because of Corona. So, uh, have you seen any other people in your department that have decided to uh, choose a career that is not traditionally architectural? Perhaps going to something like yours, or do set design, or right. be or, or just design or design thing, whatever, something else. Yeah, well, surprisingly, not that many. Uh, I, actually, I feel that uh, students at USC are pretty, uh, have a pretty corporate set of mind. So uh, a lot of the internships that my friends have been uh, taking are, you know, very much related to architecture and uh, mostly, you know, in big architectural firms very corporate firms. Um, so yeah, surprisingly, not that many. Uh, a few actually, a few like are actually becoming artists. I have uh, a friend of mine that's two years older than me that has been traveling the world. Uh, so he graduated from USC architectural school two years ago. And now he's basically just like, traveling the world, going from uh, residency to residency to uh, become an artist. But I guess that's the only case that I've witnessed uh, in the, yeah, in the, in the architectural school of USC. Is that have, an approach that would interest you to kind of have a more artist in, resident, in residence uh, approach? Yeah, yeah, totally. That's, or, what I was, that's what I was looking into until, you know, all of this fiasco uh, was coronavirus started. Um, but yeah, I was definitely planning on taking, you know, a year and, uh, kind of like going around and apply to, uh, residencies, uh, because it's such a great way to, uh, basically like keep exploring what it is that you want to do. Uh, and you know, with funds that they provide. So it's, uh, that's really great. Were internships? So, did you do any internships? And if yes, were they uh, formative? And in what way? And were they in some way responsible for your decision to change careers? Yeah, for sure. Um, that was that was a big part, actually. So, the my first main internship actually was uh, in second year. And uh, it was at Frank Gehry's uh, in their office uh, in Los Angeles. That's uh, yeah, that was, so that was really great. And that was my only corporate experience. And that's probably like the best or like most fun corporate experience that you can have. So that lasted two to three months. And so, uh, I want to talk about your experience at Frank Gehry's. How was yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was awesome, man. It was really cool. Um, what about they, it? well, they really, they really immerse you in uh, their projects. You know, they don't really set you aside. So you're there the whole time with um, uh, the architecture, um, like professionals and Gary himself sometimes. Uh, you're in the meetings, uh, you're producing with them. Uh, obviously, you know, it was my second year, I wasn't designing, um, but a lot of uh, creations of maquettes, uh, creation of drawings, um, and you know, they really trust you. They really, you really, uh, have a role there, you know, so they, uh, and that was only after two years of studies, right? So they, you do have a certain amount of responsibility, uh, as an intern. And, uh, so the whole time that I was there, I worked on, uh, one main project, which is the extension of the Louis Vuitton foundation, uh, in Paris. I don't know if you saw they're like building uh, this uh, 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 like this secondary building right next to the foundation. Uh, right now it's under construction. And so it was super interesting, you know, like 
I think what was really cool is that, uh, well, you know, conversation with Gary were obviously the coolest part, but, uh, you know, I wasn't like, I never like hoped to get that internship. Like I didn't think that was gonna be a possibility. And uh, yeah, when you get there, I guess they really like trust your judgment uh, on stuff. And, you know, I mean, I was super young, so you don't get to like, um, you learn a lot, obviously. Uh, and, you know, model making like techniques, like small things, you know, but you know, as a second year, like you don't get to do uh, like crazy stuff. But that was definitely like a really good first experience uh, in the architectural world. Um, and again, yeah, super big office. And the next internship that I wanted to do, I wanted to like try something completely different. So their office is around like 300 uh, workers. And uh, the next summer I work in this uh, small firm called Malka Architecture which is only comprised of like four to five individuals. And I wanted to try it out because I really wanted to see the difference between, you know, a very corporate firm and a more, uh, uh, you know, a smaller firm where you had more contact maybe with uh, the individuals and had a closer um, uh, responsibility towards design and uh, the projects themselves. Uh, so that wasn't the best experience. So it's a small firm in Paris. Um, and it wasn't as great, I guess, because I feel there obviously are, are like way more opportunities uh, in the architectural field in the US than uh, in Europe. So in Europe, if you don't have a lot of experience, I guess they kind of like take advantage uh, of your working hours. So um, basically, you know, the two months that I stayed there, it wasn't a paid internship, unlike Gary's, and uh, they gave me a lot of work, like a ridiculous amount of work, like that you wouldn't entrust, you know, a freaking 20 year old with, <laughs> like I had no idea what I was doing and I, I didn't understand how they like trusted me with these things. And uh, I was basically left alone in their office for a full month by myself no one was there and it was just ridiculous man i was like i was looking at that dude's instagram and he was telling me oh i'm on a business trip i would i follow him on instagram the dude was in monaco in saint tropez ibiza i was like dude are you freaking kidding me like this is insane i didn't work in a small office in la but i obviously have seen all my other friends do so like in california and there's obviously a very like strong relation between the professors and the students uh, at USC and a lot of the students go working for the professors. And from what I've heard, uh, I mean, it's always a very amicable environment. And um, like they understand that you're a student. So even though you're working for them, you know, like they really like follow you uh, and explain like every step of the process. Um, so that's really cool. And I, I guess I didn't get to have that experience, but I've learned that, uh, you know, you should, you know, keep closer contact with the people that are teaching you uh, if you want to like learn more hands-on uh, stuff. So Malka was the last office that you worked at ever? Yeah, so after that, I the next summer, I basically wanted to just work on personal projects and uh yeah and that was the last summer what kind of projects did you work on uh i was doing this like animation clip for a friend of mine who does music so that took me a while and uh yeah traveling also do you feel that um it actually prepares people for a career or is that the education that you receive purely philosophical that's kind of leading the witness, but I'm just curious what you think. I think that you can take it both ways. I, it depends what it is that you want to do. Uh, I definitely took it in the more like philosophical, took the philosoph philosophical approach, but I mean, they give you the resources to like have more, uh, uh, 
like not necessarily like in terms of classes, but you know, they give you the information that you need uh, if you were, for example, wanting to like uh, pass your license in the like next year. And they they do prep you for like uh, that 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 world. Uh, and aside from that, I mean, the license is one thing, but I'm talking about right um, professional practice. Yeah, as well yeah, as yeah. other skills that are transferable more easily to other professions. Right. I think that that really came like at the very end of the studies, so like fourth and fifth year. Um, yeah. And you know, I think you can take them like to different like grades of seriousness. I think the standards of what they're asking is not necessarily as um, as much as you would hope for. Meaning that you know, I guess before coming to architectural school, I really thought that when coming out, I would be able to like you know build a building from scratch and completely understand every step of the way uh, and uh, you know being aware of like all these things. But the thing is that all, all, all of that, which encompasses the construction of a building, is the amount of knowledge that you need is so broad and so large and so specific to each case that you know, you, you kind of come out with like a general understanding of all of these notions, but you don't necessarily, uh, you know, f feel very like super confident about, uh, <laughs> or as confident as you would like, you would have hoped to be when like starting uh, the whole undergraduate experience. Um, but I think that's, you know, maybe kind of the same, I guess, it's not the same as like in Europe. Like I did a semester abroad in Barcelona and we were in this uh, university um, called La Salle. And I think, you know, a lot of the students uh, went through like a eight to 10 year old, uh, eight to 10 year long, um, uh, I don't know what it's called, but by the end of it, you're an architect, you know? And like, from what I had seen, uh, in terms of what they were producing, it clearly seemed like they had more uh, technical knowledge than we did uh, at USC. And it was a little, yeah, it was a little, uh, um, it was a little scary. <laughs> was that combining an internship with uh, academic work as well? Well, they definitely do that in Europe in general, uh, but even in terms of their classes, like there was definitely more like pro prac uh, uh, courses, and yeah, it's a little more, a little easier in Europe to become an architect in terms of uh, licensure requirements. So maybe mm -hmm. that's part of why. But, uh, but was, yeah, I mean, it wasn't even you know like uh, like the test itself, but. It was the, uh, the knowledge of the field. Yeah, the attitude, the attitude they had, you know, towards design uh, in general wasn't as uh, open in terms of uh, design and like just creation and personal uh, involvement uh, within that whole uh, thing. But uh, yeah, like it was just super technical and kind of raw. What do you think from the work that we did and all the all the things that you you went through there? What do you think you carried with you to architecture school? Yeah, uh, well, I, I must tell you, man, that Piranesi like project really stuck with me. I really loved it. Uh, but you know, uh, just I guess uh, first of all, the workflow. You know, like I think I said it before, but like. Um, being able to like create for yourself, you know, like creating something that's meaningful. I guess that was like the first thing that I took uh, from uh, that experience with you. And uh, you know, if you're like, if you believe in these projects, like taking the time to like produce them to a certain level that you think is acceptable, which often is like uh, rare, you know, to find one's own work uh, acceptable. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess it it, it was really about like uh, the discipline. I guess the whole discipline of 
uh, of the whole workflow. Um, and except, I mean, I feel like the creation of the projects themselves, I feel like when you get into architecture school is uh, kind of changes a lot just because of the people that you work with and the expectations of the professors. But essentially, right. essentially, um, the way we approached the different thematics that we're interested in is not so different. So yeah, I guess those are our main two points that I've kept. Uh, I was never like assured of, you know, that path of, you know, going to animation school that definitely like, I mean, I've had this conversation with a lot of people, which is like, oh, hey, I mean, yeah, if, if I start doing like another set of studies, which is animation, then it's just like, it's going to basically be exactly what I've been experimenting with architecture right now, which is, you know, like they're giving me this set of tools, but the tools themselves don't really matter. Like it doesn't really matter what it is that you're using as long as the ideas are clear and what exactly. you're interested in is like broad enough that you can encompass exactly. your own interests. There are many examples of that too, of people who were very successful animators without knowing how to use right. the tools. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, totally. what were you saying? Sorry. No, I mean, that's, that's totally it. And yeah, again, like all the people around me that I believe uh, have what it takes to like be great architects, uh, most of them, yeah, they they don't say that they hate architecture, but they just don't uh, they don't like to like narrow mind the definition of architecture as I'm an architect. And yeah, the idea of uh, you know like designer is definitely like more important and uh, valuable uh, in one's own growth. And yeah, 